guys. Well, in this week's video, we're going to get started on designing molds for the injection molding machine. Originally, when I decided to build the injection molding machine, I had several different items that I intended to mold. This first item in particular was one that I thought would be a lot easier to produce with an injection molding machine. Uh, these are the tool forks for the Precision Matthews ATC. Originally, I these out of sheet plastic and it was time consuming messy and when you're running flood coolant and you're trying to machine plastics it just it makes a mess and difficult cleanup so not to mention all the material that gets wasted that you remove so i thought this would be a perfect piece for an injection molding machine so in today's video we're going to get started with the tool fork here full disclosure and disclaimer i am not a professional mold designer or builder this is all new to me so please bear in mind that some of the terminology i may use or some of the different parts of the mold i may call out incorrectly some of the methods that i'm going to use to design the mold may not be uh, the most efficient or best practice for those of you that are more experienced in this area please feel free to comment in the video and uh, that'll help improve my skills and also help viewers that are looking to do something like this. Uh, having said that, let's get started. First off, those of you that have, are longtime subscribers may notice that I redesigned this tool fork slightly. Originally, like I said, I designed this to be machined out on the mill, so I took advantage of what I was using to produce this. With the injection molding machine, I also took advantage of that. So I have put in these cavities here just to kind of reduce the amount of material that I'm going to be using. I've also rounded off all these corners so that when I do the reverse or inverse of this piece here and make the mold, all these corners will be nice and rounded. It'll just be a lot easier for me to machine and a lot easier for it to release out of the mold. Now, I know that because of this piece has square sides, it may be difficult to remove the piece from the mold however i think because it's only 300 thousandths thick here i think it will probably be okay we're going to move forward like this i don't think i need to add any draft here to these pieces so before we get started there are a couple of things that i don't normally use in fusion 360 that we will be using uh, when designing uh, this mold the first item is combined we're not actually going to be combining, we're going to be subtracting, but this particular operation is called combined. Second is split. So split body is after we make our mold, we want to split it on the parting line, and we're going to use split body to do that. And one other item is mid-plane, and that is just going to be to define our dividing line for the splitting operation. All right, so let's just get started here. So the first thing I did was I wanted to create a sketch that encompassed the whole piece. Now, in doing so, I wanted to make sure that my parting plane was on the level of the step here. So that is the same height as the inter cavity. And so I felt like that was a great place to have a parting line for the mold. So what I did was I just made sure I put the drawing plane on this level here. And also, I wanted to have a little bit more mold material up top here because this is where I intend to put the sprue to fill the mold. You can see the center is offset. Normally I would have put it around here, but I moved it offset a little bit just to give me a little more space up top here. The next operation was to extrude the part. So after I drew the sketch, the next thing to do was extrude. I extruded from this plane here symmetrically, one half inch in both directions. So our mold here is going to be two and three quarters by four inches by one inch thick. Next was the combined operation here. So for our target body, I selected the mold and for our tool body, I selected the tool fork. You want to select cut operation, keep tools. Uh, if you did not create a component when you built the mold, go ahead and select new component. And so now we have our mold. And notice we used the combined operation, but we did not combine. We actually cut away. 
Uh, the next operation is our mid plane. Select our mid plane here, and that is on that same sketch line that we drew earlier. And then we're going to use the split operation that I spoke of earlier. We're going to select the body to split, which is our mold, and then our splitting line, which is our construction plane, and you notice that it cuts it away there. Uh, when it does that, it will split these into two bodies, and so you can see that I have renamed these mold bottom, mold top. So we can get rid of our construction plane here. Uh, let's remove the mold top. You can see that our tool forks are here. You can name this so you know that this is the tool fork body. And you can see it cuts it away. Let's get rid of our sketch here just so we can kind of see what's going on. Once again, you can see our tool body. And then we can look at the mold top, how it's going to be there in place. And then again, let's remove the tool fork and you can kind of see how our mold is. So there is our mold. Uh, next, I am going to put the through holes for the mounting holes through the center here. And that's just going to go through the whole piece. All I did was uh, create a cylinder and then just went straight through. These are six millimeter holes. Uh, next, we created a component, uh, brass pins, and these are so that we will have plugs inside the mold that will create these mounting holes. So we have two of those. Uh, they go all the way through the mold. That way, when I split it apart, I can kind of just knock these pins out. Uh, next, we need to create a hole to fill. Now, this is just a countersunk hole here. It's a three-quarter inch diameter, uh, 90 degrees. The center hole here is an eighth of an inch, and you can kind of see. So this is our gate or runner. This really doesn't, I don't think, has a gate, but uh, this is our runner or sprue. And then next, we need some alignment pins. We just created a separate sketch. So we just drew our alignment pins. I put one here in the center and then one over here to the side. You probably could put an additional one here, but I don't think it's going to be necessary. And I want this to be able to break apart uh, fairly easily. So after uh, we did our sketch, we're going to symmetrically extrude these two. I'm just going to round over the edges a little bit here and then again we're going to use that combined feature and we're going to remove the material that the pins are displacing in the each side of the mold by selecting uh, the target body and the tool bodies being the pin and the target body being one part of the mold again we're going to keep our tools because we want to con continue to have our pins here and then I just did it once again for the other side of the mold here. Our target body being the mold and our tool being the pins. Again, cut and keep our tools. And so there we have uh, the finished mold. It seems to be fairly straightforward. However, um, it did take me a little, little while to figure out how to do all this. With the helps of some fellow YouTubers that I've you know with different mold design i was able to um uh, figure this out that is our mold so it's one inch thick two and three quarters by four inches we'll stand it up like so and inject it and hopefully things will turn out well all right guys so let's take a look at the cam operations uh, we have four different setups here uh, the first setup is going to be our mold bottom i tried to design this cam to bookmark this so i have my zero set in the center of this side we're going to clamp our part in the vise like so and so i've got the origin set for our cam operation uh, to the left center on this piece and then the other piece it will be on the right center and then that way the pieces are kind of bookmarked and i'm going to machine them all together that they can just fold up like a book so the first operation is just a drilling operation i'm just using an eighth inch drill bit and we're just drilling these holes here for our alignment pins uh, we're going to come back with an eighth inch end mill and we're going to do a spiral boring operation uh, these are five millimeter alignment pins third operation is an adaptive clearing operation we're using the 3 16 inch three flute end mill to do our cavity here uh, we're doing a 18 inches a minute 
4,800 RPMs with a 30 thousandths width of cut. Uh, we're leaving uh, 10 thousandths on the sides here. Uh, we'll then come back with a contour operation with the same tool and clean up the 10 thousandths that we left in the previous operation. That's pretty much all the machining for the cavity for the bottom. So now let's take a look at the uh, mold top. Before we get started, you can see that I have set the origin for the right side of the mold in the center of the long four inch side. So like I said, there these two pieces will be bookmarked. When I go to machining, I'll have one on this side, one on the other side, and I'll machine these together. All right, so for the first operation, we have a drilling operation. Again, we're just drilling uh, the center of our lineup pins. Uh, then we're going to come back with the same uh, with the eighth inch end mill and a boring operation to clean up those holes. So for our third operation, it's an adaptive operation. Uh, again, we're using an eighth inch end mill. When you're dealing with these mold cavities and you have to get in between these two, you know, these fine spots here, I couldn't use the three sixteenths for the uh, mold top because I couldn't get between here. So I'm using an eighth inch end mill. I could probably use a smaller end mill and uh, give myself more room because you can see that's really tight in there. But I would have to machine at slower speeds and I'm thinking it's going to be slow enough with this eighth inch end mill. 4800 RPMs. I'm running at 10 inches per minute. A 30,000 step over. And I'm leaving, uh, I had to leave a minimal amount of stock for the cleanup pass because of this cavity right here. So uh, we're only leaving two thousandths on the walls. And then we'll come back in the next operation in the contour operation and clean that up. So that is the top and bottom portion of the mold. And then our next setup is going to be for our injection hole. These big countersinks have always been tricky for me, and so my work around Infusion 360, I'll show you here. Um, but we're just setting up with the parts standing up, uh, one inch, two and seven, uh, 2.75. We're going to place it in the center. Uh, the first operation is just a drilling operation with an eighth inch drill bit, uh, just to reach our cavity down below, as you can see here. Uh, the next operation is a series of countersinks. And what I did was I'm using a 3 8 inch two flute 90 degree chamfer mill. The operation I'm using here is just a boring operation. But I had to trick Fusion 360 into thinking that it has just an end mill here. So you can see how I've designed this tool. Um, what it does, it, it allows it to do this spiral uh, cut. like so and then what I do is I just I do a series of these with uh, different offsets till I get out to uh, where I want to go and then that allows uh, it to take smaller uh, step overs for the width of cut and it's not plunging in and doing the whole thing uh, in one pass uh, this tends to work out well for me that's kind of my workaround now, I developed this workaround several, couple, three years ago, so I haven't really checked to see if Fusion has kind of uh, worked that out with chamfer mills. But if you try to select a chamfer mill and do a boring operation, it will tell you that you do not have the correct tool for that. So that's why I did it this way. The last operation is just for uh, my two through holes here, and I'm Drilling this with a five millimeter drill bit all the way through, and then I'm just going to come back with a uh, three sixteenths inch end mill and do a boring operation all the way through for my six millimeter plugs. I think overall it's going to turn out uh, well. My only concern would be the release. Um, you can come into uh, Fusion 360 and do a draft analysis if you go to inspect draft analysis um, you select the body 
and then you select the direction which would be this direction you can see that these side walls are really dark red um, you don't want to see any red so we may have a little issue there now to solve this problem I could come in here instead of using a straight sided flat end mill I could use a tapered end mill when I'm machining this put just a slight taper on all of these edges but I think because it's not that thick it's going to be okay all right guys well that wraps up this video if you're new to my channel and you're just tuning in click on that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner also click on that notification bell that way when I post a new video like this one they'll send you a notification if it's something you're interested in you can stop by and check it out as always, please feel free to ask questions, make suggestions, or leave comments. Thumbs up if you like the video. Please subscribe, and most importantly, be safe.